Welcome to the coffee vault. I'm kind of a dragon, man. I've had too much coffee and it's starting to freak me out a little bit. Really? Yeah, I, I get jittery and then I get like, I don't feel good. Well, I mean, it doesn't take much for for the hobbit body. <laughs> That's where you're headed with that. Let me just finish that one for you. No, I just started. All right, we're making coffee today. I set it up and you took it home. I'm returning back to an earlier nerd, Daniel, before he was into alcohol, was super into coffee. Yeah, <laughs> and I am mooching coffee. Okay, it's uh, the beginning of coffee day. Yes, do you want to see my caffeinated face? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're gonna do. Um, we both did this at the same. We really did. And go. <laughs> um, we are going, to, and we both put our arms behind our backs. So <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use five different ways of making coffee. Yes. And then we're gonna choose our favorite. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna use that method for tomorrow to try five different kinds of coffee. So we're doing five different methods, methods with the same kind of coffee? Same kind of coffee. Same kind of coffee. Okay. Ooh. So, Ooh. For, so here's okay. the thing about so coffee. So the only difference is the method being used. Yes. And we will choose the superior method for, for our preferences. For our preferences. Yes. So what we have is Keurig. We actually did like our uh, my own coffee in a custom Keurig container. Yeah, yeah. You can buy them. So Keurig. Put your own grounds in there, coffee. Are you ready? Ground up stuff. Right here. Coffee. A generic. Is it called grounds? Grounds. Before you use yeah. it? I know it's grounds after it's you ground, use it. Yeah, it's grounds. Okay. And then our own little like hotel size coffee. What if that wins? Uh, I'm gonna be super excited <laughs> about that, actually. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, um, and I will give you all of what I did for each of these after we do the process. Fine. Grounds are already in because I needed slightly different ground consistency for each of these. Right. And I am a coffee nerd. I worked at multiple coffee shops, managed different things and did, so I actually give a shit about this. Okay. So we're gonna start with French press. This is an AeroPress. Okay. And this is a Chemex. Right. So the first thing on all three of these is the same. We need to get the coffee grounds to bloom a little bit and warm up and let some of the carbon dioxide off gas. Okay. So all we're doing is getting them evenly wet and warmed up, and then we just let it sit for 30 to 45 seconds. Hmm. And we'll do the same thing here. I've never even seen this, the, the tube. Yeah, so we're not actually filling it, we're just kind of letting it, it's gonna be easier to see with the Chemex. Okay, so we're gonna let that sit for a second. Now what's happening when you let this bloom is you're letting a lot of the harsh gases. There's harsh gases. That are coming out first when you heat up all these coffee grounds. Okay. You're letting them escape. Yeah. So they don't get shoved down into the coffee. Which would make it more bitter? Bitter right, and right. dark and nasty kind of tasting. Yeah, yeah. Acidic. Sure. Right? AeroPress is basically doing a super condensed push through and I'm doing an upside down method. You can do this the other way around. Okay. Um, and I am using 176 Fahrenheit water and I'm using about a one to one ratio of 17-ish grams to 250 milliliters of water. 176 seems a bit low for me. I usually go 207. <laughs> okay, so. 207. We're gonna open this up now. It's been long enough. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna let that sit. Mm -hmm. The whole process should take under four minutes for all of these. So. And I have my measuring lines already, so I know where I'm pouring to. Just so you know. If somebody were to drink coffee without taking the coffee grounds out, mm -hmm. would it taste very different or would it just be nasty because of all of the stuff? Uh, it would taste it both. Yeah. The answer is both. Right. Okay, now let's talk about something that's kind of important. We're letting the chemics just kind of pour through. Not my unimportant question. We're actually going to stir something up. Something that's actually No, it's important, important. to know next. Yeah. We're actually going to mix this up a little bit and get it kind of good there. Sure. Okay. When people talk about, and this is by the way, all one medium roast, Cuvi, which is a, a Spicewood, Texas company. Is it Cuvi or Cuvé? I've heard Cuvée. of it. It's Cuvé. It's Cuvé. All right. So it's Cuvé, Las Mingas. This is their Colombian roast, yeah. uh, medium roast. Now, what do people mean by roast? Uh, they got a, the, the beans are usually like green or something, and They're then they, gotta, they have to actually cook them, yep. roast them. You roast them. And so right. light roast is up between a certain percent temperature range yeah. and time, and you get your first crack. And yeah. it'll be like popcorn. That means, oh, it's starting to heat up, right? Yeah. And then uh, as it heats up, it gets further in and you get in, uh, your second crack. And you're like, oh, now we're 
heading down the direction of charring this bean. Yeah. So medium roast is a different temperature range. So the roasts have to do with what temperature range did you hit? Yeah. People talk about, oh, I only like strong coffee, so I want the most roasted beans. That's the wrong combination uh, of things. Okay. It's like, oh, I only... Yeah, well, anyway, it's a wrong combination of things. I don't like blended whiskey, so I only drink single malt. Well, that means you're drinking blended whiskey from one distillery. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what most people mean when they say I only like strong coffee is they like the dark, rich taste. Right. And often that heavy flavor... They want to get hurt a little bit. Yeah, but what they're not considering is water and coffee proportion changes that too. Uh, so do you mean dark, you only, you surely only like a dark roast flavor? Right. Or that you just like really strong coffee because those are two very sure. different things. Because you can lighten up an incredibly dark coffee just by diluting it. Yes. Huh. Okay, so we already went like a minute and a half too long on this. I'm gonna press this French press and then we're gonna do this. So you put a little filter in here. Okay, never even seen this. You lock that in. Right, so now it's locked in. There's a little strainer. We put there. this upside down over right. a cup of coffee. Oh. And we that. press it out. What? You want to stop before you hear the big hissing sound of air escaping. Okay. Why is that? Because notice the air gap? Yeah. There's grounds are all up here and sure. the coffee's down underneath it. Yeah. A lot of other things will squeeze out through that filter if okay. you let all the... Oh, interesting. Right, so we want to leave just a little in there. Yeah. Um, now, so that's the arrow press. We're going to do that third in the lineup. Mm -hmm. French press is going to be this one. Right. Now, because you're sort of squeezing coffee through grounds right. on the arrow press, it's actually closer to like so, a espresso style. French press. And we're going to get rid of this right here. French press story. And Chemex. When I was younger, oh. the first time I ever had a French press ever, ever. The restaurant, the waiter, brought it to the table and had this up, right? Yeah. Nothing was strained out. And he set it down there. Like you know what to do. Like I knew what to do. Uh, so, you know, he started uh, pouring it and all the grains start coming out. Uh, but apparently they leave it to you. Yeah, to press when to, you're ready. When you're ready to press it down, yeah. Yeah. They should really communicate that more. <laughs> right. Okay, do we start with the fancy or start with the budget? Uh, and go up. Let's work. You start on that side. I'll start okay. on that side. Okay, Keurig. Coffee pot, right? Right, drip pot, uh, Aeropress, French Chemex. press, uh, Chemex. Chemex. French press, French press, okay. Oh, it's funny how that Keurig tastes like. It tastes better than any Keurig coffee I've ever had before because it's freshly ground beans, but it still tastes uh, interesting. Wow. Already so different. Okay. The drip coffee tastes like I would imagine. I'm not giving any tasting notes because I need I need to compare first. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's kind of nice. It's darker. Oh yeah, French press. You can taste French press. Okay, so absolutely, I was not wrong. The Chemex is my preferred style. Yeah. yeah. Next up for me is Aeropress. I haven't chosen my number two, but Chemex was my number one. So Chemex number one, it's slightly sweeter. Now, here's one thing. They have their own filters that are about, filter about 30% more than a normal filter. Wow. And so it's smooth, it's low acid. Right. Tastes almost sweet on the back end, mm. right? And then Aer uh, the Aeropress, it tastes like a really, really watered down espresso. So it's actually really dense. The, the French, is this the French press? French press is meaty. It's coming off the heels of the Chemex though. Yeah. There's a lot less body to it, I feel like. It's, it's meaty compared to, you know, the hotel thing. Yeah, so you think Chemex is more meaty? I think Chemex is, has more intensity. We may, we, Which is weird. Yeah, there's like a citrus sweetness to it on this one afterwards. And then, so hotel thing, no. Hotel thing. There's like almost, yeah. um, I'm almost getting, uh, on, what was this one? This was the, oh, okay. Was this the Aero, Aeropress? Aeropress? Mm -hmm. This almost has like a, like a chlorinated water taste to it. Like unfiltered water. Are you getting that at all? Yeah, like tap water. Yeah, like tap water. <laughs> That's funny. Hmm. It really is true. And then we use the same water? Yeah. We use the same water? Yeah. Well, wow, these are all... Yeah, we used uh, spring water. These are all legitimately, noticeably, you don't even have to go hunting, different. Oh, yeah. Same all, beans. 
All five of them, totally different. <laughs> now, the difference between this one and the Keurig are dramatic. It's not even the same coffee. The differences between AeroPress, French, and uh, Chemex are differences of degrees mm. and accents. What did they accent? What came out to the top? Right. Uh, I'm going to say the French press is my number two. Okay. I'm going to say AeroPress is my number two. No, I can't get past that top, that tap water vibe. All right. Sweet, man. So Chemex. That's kind of cool, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, All right. right, so your Chemex, first was Chemex? French press. I, I what happens be, if we do a Chemex AeroPress blend? I gotta be honest. And a Chemex French press blend. I was really kind of hoping that my preferred method involved a button. I know, me too. <laughs> That's why I was saying if that airport looking one or hotel uh, looking one worked out, that would have been a dream. Yeah, it would have been life changing. Uh, but no, they're all super good. Now, I will tell you, I'll as just a traveling. Have you, I'll have you make my Chemex whenever. As a traveler, the AeroPress is damn brilliant because it packs into like a like a toiletries bag. <laughs> so you're not at the... You're not at the mercy of the hotel. <laughs> right. Yeah, um, fair enough. So oh, I used to use one when traveling because of that. Mm. And traveling with a Chemex is a bad idea. <laughs> it's a giant glass beaker. So uh, just for those who are taking notes, the AeroPress is the most new of these setups. Uh, well, maybe not most new because you got Keurig, right? No, Keurig was 2000. This is 2005, right? The, uh, the maker of the Aerobi Frisbee. Alan Adler created and launched this AeroPress in 2005. The Alan Adler? Mm -hmm. Of Aero Frisbee, the, Alan Adler? The Alan Adler. <laughs> no, actually what he said was he was frustrated that coffee took too long to make and he wanted something that was quicker. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like, hey, just pour some grinds and water in and then press it into a cup. And not just quicker, but he was frustrated that if you wanted to only make one cup at a time instead of a pot, yeah. your options were pretty limited yeah. without getting into Chemex. So I can see, like, you know, that. over a decade ago, people were dealing with that. Yeah, so, you, well, now, I mean, you can do pour overs that sit on top of a cup. So, but chem -overs, uh, pour overs do take longer than the yeah. narrow press. Yeah. Um, the French press was 1929. Uh, considered by a lot of people to be the most legitimate way because it extracts, it's more like steeping tea leaves. It lets the coffee grounds sit in there. I guess, instead no. of having water just pass through them. I, yeah. On their way by, waving at them. Hey, so I think the, the right one for you is gonna be very, very based on uh, your situation you're in, how much yeah. time you have, how, what do you have access to, and then if you have access to anything, what do you just prefer? Yeah, absolutely. And I gotta tell you, as much as I like this, uh, if somebody wasn't making it for me, you're back to Keurig. I'm, put, I'm pushing a button. Yeah. The Keurig wasn't so... It, it, it's not bad. It's good. Like, I drink Keurig coffee three times a day. Um, but uh, actually twice a day. <laughs> the Keurig taste for me is like, oh yeah, I know this. This isn't a bad thing. I may have convinced myself. I'm kind of over coffee right now all yeah. of a sudden. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. We got another episode. We got a lot. Yeah, well, I, I forgot this. we were doing this, and so I drank like two cups of coffee this morning. I didn't know cups of coffee. And I, I'm not going to sleep till tomorrow at oh, four I in take, the afternoon. Oh, I take it back. My wife this morning, <laughs> the past two mornings now, she, she's made me this thing called like Bulletproof. Oh, Bullet Coffee. No, Bullet. You put it Bullet Coffee. You put in... Um, butter, yes, and coffee and like coconut oil or yes. oil or something all, like that. All this stuff. Yeah, it's a thing that's supposed to improve your metabolism. And no, like I lost thirty pounds in two hours. Dancing space potato. Uh, hey boys, I'll be honest. My opinions on these are exactly what yours are. I, however, found the best pairing to be drinking either of these whiskeys after a six pack of Dead Guy Ale. <laughs> so it's this Elliot who sent us the Dead Guy whiskeys. <laughs> and he's like, I agree with you, they're not that great. <laughs> uh, six pack of to take out a lot of the offensive bits, still prefer Shiner Bach and Rogue's Dead Guy. So what he's saying, if you're a six pack deep, right. then, then this, you break into that whiskey. Then this whiskey's good <laughs> stuff, yeah, alright. All right. So let's do the thing with the, the thing next episode with the thing. Oh yeah, so this is day two. Right. So, um... We've got three more days left of this. Well, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Sure. That'll make it seven solid days. Yeah, quarterly challenge is what's happening. We're doing a dry week. We're doing non-whiskey things. Mm -hmm. So it's not mandatory, so, but you're welcome to join us. This is what, Monday's episode probably? So tomorrow's episode. Don't make me think, man. No, it's not actually. It's Friday's episode. This is Friday. It's a day of the week. Yeah. Okay. The next episode is going to be, we're going to use the Chemex to make five different kinds of coffee. Sure. So if it's Friday, check out the biscuit episode tomorrow on Saturday. Different channel. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. Uh, if you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink coffee, may, may you, you drink, drink with, with us. us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, 
drop a question or comment down below.